It was strange enough that the infamous Oprah interview was pulled 30 days after it was aired. You can't find it anywhere, at least legally. With so much money involved, what will be the reason they decided to hide it from everyone? Well, you're about to find out. Welcome back, my battle language buddies. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the battle language guy, and it would be great if you join us by just liking this video, subscribing, and hitting that bell. Let's get down to it. Back in 2019, things were starting to go south between the Harkles and the royal family. In May, Archie was born and not Meg really wanted to arrange an exclusive. The problem is that she did not want any British commoner to interview her. She wanted Gail King as reported by the Daily Mail. So it makes sense because you can imagine that Meghan must have been aware that her popularity in the UK was slowly going down, but she still had a shot at home. And that waning popularity must have something to do with the rumors about the Sussexes and the Cambridges not wanted to have barbecues together anymore. In other words, they were not getting along well. It goes without saying that Oprah must have been aware of this since she is a close friend of Gail. And there are apparently no hard feelings since it was Oprah who landed the exclusive in the end. And as you may already know, it was aired in March 2021. Please keep in mind Oprah and Gail's friendship because it will be important later on. But again, why the interview only lasted 30 days online and then disappeared into thin air? Well, the official statement from Harpo Productions, which is Oprah's company, as to why no one can watch it anymore is rather absurd. From the start of negotiations, Mrs. Winfrey's company, Harper Productions, envisioned the special as something suited to a big broadcast network. As in, she wanted it to be a live television event and not available in other streaming services besides CBS website in the US or ITV in the UK. The other streaming services could have been Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. Having it as a premiere and only on big broadcasting services makes sense because you want to reinforce the vibes of a live program. It's part of our current psychology that we associate whatever we watch on the streaming services such as Netflix that we can consume it in our own time. We decide when to watch it. Forcing people to watch a program live gives it gravitas, relevance, importance, something that is all the more critical since it was about, well, the Harkles. So, okay, the original live broadcast made sense to air just on CBS as a live primetime special. Of course, live is relative because it was a pre-recorded and edited program. Now, let's talk about money. And I've told you more than a couple times that following the money can give you a lot of answers, even some that you weren't looking for in the first place. Why didn't Harper Productions sell the streaming rights after the interview was originally aired? In fact, CBS paid a hefty license fee of between 7 and 9 million to air it. And in the UK, ITV made the cut paying the equivalent of 1.4 million dollars. There's a reason why these networks were desperate to outbid everyone else. Because, as an example, CBS was charging $325,000 for 30 seconds of advertising space. Yes, there was a ton of money to be made over this. And of course, Oprah was not doing this for art's sake. You don't get to a net worth of $2.6 billion doing things for art's sake. That only means that you know where the money is and you also know how to take it. This is where things just don't make sense. Because you can imagine that Oprah knew that this was going to be a banger, that this was going to make waves worldwide, and if she sold the rights to streaming services, she could make, like, a ton of money. But then, why try to fool us, claiming that she was not aware of people's reactions in the following days? Gail King made a statement that it was herself that had to notify Oprah of the interview blowing up, and that Oprah was absolutely unaware, and I quote, sitting on her back porch reading a book. So it was like, Oprah, this thing is blowing up. What? Yes. And everyone is already claiming that it's all just a bunch of horseshit, bollocks, lies. Hold up, hold up. 
Are you telling me that a media mogul with the business acumen of Oprah did not expect the possible response of the whole world? Of course she did. There is no other way around that. But then, why use Gail to make those claims to the media? Why use her friend to make it seem like she was not aware of anything? Well, unless... Uh, she knew there was going to be a massive response, but the massive response she got was not the one that she expected. And we stumble upon another contradiction. And it's a level of logic that you cannot escape. Oprah loves money. Oprah owns the rights to the interview because she literally produced it. And Oprah could make more money just by selling the streaming rights to a couple of streaming companies. The interview blows up as expected, maybe even more than she expected, so she could charge even more money for those streaming services, right? There has to be a very good reason to break this logic. So we have to find the weakest link in our axiomatic system. There is no doubt about the public's response, there's no doubt about who owns these rights, Oprah. And there's no doubt that streaming services would pay a good chunk of their huge budget allocated to no sugar just for the rights to replay the unfortunate recollections of the Harkles. So the only link left is Oprah's love for money. There has to be something that Oprah values more than money, something that money cannot buy. So many things. But there is one thing that, professionally, is way more important for a media mogul than money itself, and that is credibility. Your reputation as a credible source of information. And in Oprah's case, she knows that for her career, credibility is the asset that segues into legacy. There's no way around that. It's really easy to make the connection. You break your credibility, you bust your legacy, just like that. Maybe you can afford to make mistakes here and there. It can happen to anyone and it's understandable. We are only humans. But what happens when a mistake is viewed by tens of millions of people worldwide? It becomes a problem. A serious problem. And yes, I'm talking about the Harry and Meghan interview. Because there were lies that could have been easily disproven on the spot if Oprah had just made her due diligence. So she could ask sharper questions on the spot. My guess is that two things happened. First, Oprah couldn't wait one more minute to make that interview, so she rushed it. And when you rush, your alarms don't work as well. And two, I'm sure that Meghan played her victim role to perfection prior to this, so Oprah thought that she was going to uncover the truth of the evil British monarchy. To be fair, we're prone to these errors in judgments if we rely on only one source of information. I'm sure Oprah did not feel the need to reach out to Kensington Palace or the Archbishop of Canterbury or anyone to confirm any of the Harkle's claims before going live with this. Well, also she must have wanted to keep it under wraps until the very last moment. But the only reason left to why the more popular interview of 2021 was deleted from the internet is that Oprah realized too late that this was a direct threat to her credibility and of course her legacy. And that is yet another way to prove that whatever Harry and Meghan said on those 80 minutes, you have to take it with a grain, no, no, scratch that, with a boulder of salt. You can imagine that whoever is willing to interview them in the future doesn't want to make the same mistake. And by mistake, I mean the act of interviewing them. If you want to refine your observation skills, all you have to do is download my 100 battle language tips right in the description of this video. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas and it will always be a pleasure, my battle language buddies. Much love and bliss.